Well, today I'm lined up for pretty major work. Um, I just I've done I just watercolour I've done for quite a while, and I'm really looking forward to it actually. This is going to be in that very loose style that I use. It was first um, shown to me by a wonderful artist in New Zealand who uh, paints the salient points first, such as the figures, lights, signs, things like that, and then goes into the looser work afterwards and gradually tightens back to them. You wouldn't think that you could do that because normally in watercolour we're doing very loose and going tighter and tighter and finishing with the very fine things at the end. But in this case, um, we're going to work on the figures and the salient points first and then go very loose and effective light and bring it back gradually tighter to the figures with uh, dry brush work. Now the brushes I'm going to use today on the paints, I used the Winsor Newton last time, the very fine colours. This time I'm going to use much stronger colours and this is the painting we're going to be doing. Plus you can't really see it from the uh, drawing very well. But if we come down now to the uh, paints I'm going to be using these Russian colours which are much stronger and um, of all my brushes I hopefully am only going to need just this little selection, a sword, a round, a mop and a stiffer uh, flat for doing some textural dry brush work. Let's see if we can get away with those. I've almost forgotten but I'm also going to need a mixing palette of course. Exactly that will do. I'm ready to go. Now my photograph. And where do we start? Well I'm going to start then using the sword brush. Um, I think it's a larger one actually. I've got several swords here of different sizes. I've got this one as well which is rather fun. Um, so it's between whether that one will do the work or, or the larger one. That one's quite nice, I must admit. I haven't used these swords till now. I've only used my other ones from the packs in France. But let's have a go with this one. So we're going to be painting smaller areas but still fairly loosely. So again here on this head, I'm going to start there. Um, we need to have the lighter colour to start with. Just going to, and this is the beauty of the swords is we can flick across like that. And just paint in these areas straight away. I've got to look for my colours and I don't know this palette yet. So I've got to really look for these colours. We're not going to go into a great deal of detail. I want to be fairly strong with it because, as, as we say, the colours are going to go lighter later. Let that dry a bit whilst that's drying down. Got a little bit of green just down our arm here. It's a very strong colour, so I don't want to be too strident yet, but I'm going to be using it very, very much more strongly as we go on. Right, leave that, come across to here, and there's a very light move so I've got to use it much more thinly so I think we're onto this sort of colour here down the figure and just flip that around there all the way down that side and then a bit of the green comes all the way down strange colours to use but this is the beauty of digitising photographs and playing with the colours which is what I've just been doing on a recent film for you. In fact, if you go back in between this film and the, the previous one, you will see a film on using photographs in art, which I hope we'll find interesting. OK, we'll start dropping into that in just a moment. We need a slightly darker purple now, turquoise blue here. That uh, could be rather fun. So I'll bring that down there with the sword and flick it into here. And I'm going to use this wet into wet She's quite light at the moment then, isn't she? And I'm going to go much, much stronger in a moment. I really go much, much stronger down there now. And let these colours blow. Let the watercolour do the work. Let the abstract uh, qualities show. Really enjoy it. So we get that lovely luminosity. Coming down here, we've got a straight sort of grey colour. Try a bit of brown with that um, colour we just made. See if I can get that grey colour with that. That doesn't seem far off actually. Blue and um, brown usually makes quite a nice grey with white. There we go, look. That's quite a nice grey. I can just flick that down with the brush like that. As I've got a lovely rough paper today, I don't want to lose that. I want to keep this roughness. Um, and the quality of the sparkle of light coming through from the paper. I'm just going to spread up there nicely. 
give us the impression to go to effect again. We'll use that brush to come down in almost one stroke there and just uh, straight down here. And I'm going to link it into here. Just bring that round and we'll bring these shapes in there. So I want to keep it nice and loose, almost one stroke painting. Right, that comes into there. And we've got our shoes. And in just a few strokes, hopefully, we have a figure. And it's so lovely to be able to use the texture of the paper, the dry brush work. Now it's a bit dark coming down there. A glaze. I'd like to get the shoulder out a bit there, a bit more, I think. That's it. Get a little bit more shape there. Coming around the neck, down to here. Right, so salient points, there we go. The hair needs to be a fraction darker, so again, now I can come back to it. It should be dry enough now to work into. So it's all to do with timing, isn't it? So a little bit of this dark I made earlier. And we'll just let that play against this here. Face out a bit. Uh, not to overwork, but we've got the light against the darks now. Now, let's come to this fellow. Bit of fun with him, shall we? And again, same sort of colours. We've got the red and purple here. Flip that across here. Get the wet into wet going down his arm. He's got some coming across his head as well here. And down the side of his arm there. Play these wet into wets again. Right, that comes up into there, around his shoulder. In fact, it's so turquoise, it's almost going green just here. So I'm going to use a bit of very light green from here to uh, come down the back of here. And then I'm trying to do it all in, in single strokes. The feeling of this happening. And then I'm going to come back with that very light blue. Link it in. There's a much stronger blue coming down here as well yet. I need to find. Around his hand. Down to there. Now, as I was saying, there's a much stronger blue, so we're going to find that now. And it's a much warmer blue, so a little bit of... Let's see if this does it. Yes, that's it. So a little bit of the purple into the blue should do the job. Let that just come down into there. Flood it down. Lost a little bit there, going to be a little bit um, warmer there. Now I want to go darker, so I come down to that dark I made earlier. And we'll just start to drop that into here. Again, wet into wet. Much more similar to the painting that we were doing earlier on, isn't it? You can see how much more fresh this is. Um, much fresher altogether. I want to get a dark of his hair in now, and I'd like to try and do that in fairly quick, simple strokes again, if I can. Right down to there, across his head, and down and in. Right, so he's almost done. To go much, much lighter just on his heel there. Could add a little bit of yellow to that grey. 
So I reckon that should give us a nicer grey for his foot there, like that. So it's a nice orange there. Orange glow. It's quite strong. A little bit of cadmium orange into it maybe as well. I'll bring that right the way around and across so that I can drop wet into wet into that in a minute. And in fact I want that orange coming down her back here because I want to put a a red into that. My soft red. Got that red come down, drop down into it. There we go. Back of her head. Now I want a much cooler red. So how am I going to make me have to use that red purple from earlier? I'm going to have to clean my palette occasionally today as well. And some of that bright red into it. Hopefully that will give me, yes, that lovely rich, I can drop a bit more purple in this later, rich um, cool red for her here. Just whack that in, and down to there. Lovely way to work this. And that comes down actually both sides of her feet here, strangely enough, and into the little link in with the um, and it's also going to be for her head, which is a little bit warmer here. Again, just a few strokes I hope I can do this face in. Right down to the back here. Up and round. Down there. And you've just got that a little bit much there. Let's just take it off my finger just a bit. And then I want to go much, much darker there with the purple. Just drop purple into that. There we go. And we'll just bring her head, her head just over the front just a bit more there to give her more shape. Right up the back here. And round back of her neck. And a wee bit darker under here. And I need to get the darks in, which is fine, it's pain's great, but something Probably a deep pressure. Really lovely strokes in here and down. Just a few strokes again if I can, just a few brush strokes to get that done. The figure behind here. I'm actually working up these salient points there. So I'm going to leave my little sword for the minute, having played with the figures, and uh, go to a round because I want to put in some of these lovely darks already. And I can put a wash over those later. So let's bring these in now. These are salient points to me. In other words, they're very important points in the painting. Because I'm going to pick these out and stylize it slightly. And you'd think that they'd become a nuisance later, but we should be able to just wash over them and they should just remain and stay there. At least they have done in the past. So I assume they will with these paints. Lovely and strong these paints. I'm deliberately letting the paint be slightly broken here. I'm not um I'm just doing a little bit of dry brush work here and there. points are we'll we'll paint them in now. It's funny how we can put such detail into some areas and then just leave the rest loose but it's, it's I think I find it a fun way to work. We'll put the very lights in later it's just any, any dark lettering at the moment. Now these paints are I can feel it now they're quite a lot more opaque than Windsor and Newtons. I've got the control for that. The reason I've done that is because I want to paint in these um, 
There's bits of lettering over the top in a moment. But I'm going to use my oval mop for most of it. Okay, not a little too much. Let this dry off there. Any other points that I need to do um, at the moment? Just a bit of detail at the moment, just to really pick things up. And we get one colour coming through into another. So this colour has come through into there. Drag it through and around here. And the rest we should better pick up with the other colours later. Let's dry brush into this. Let's get an indication of it. And while that's drying, let's come across to our umbrella here. It'd be rather nice to get that right. So I'm going to take some yellow and drop that in here. First, intersections, some very light yellow going on back here. Now I need to go green into that. So let's see what we can do in the way of green there. Whilst that's drying, take a wee bit of orange up here. Nice. I want a really lovely light red. What am I going to do about that? A pink of that, maybe. Yes, that's a nice red. That's a bit, a bit happier about that. Into there. Let the white just glow through there. Down here. A bit stronger with that colour. Now this is where we can start to use these heavier paints that I was talking about. You see where I've just dropped that in there and it's quite quite a strong vibrant colour. There's a strange greeny yellow ochre colour going on. So I'm going to take some yellow ochre first. Come down here and let that drop in first. We get this sort of colour, wet into wet. Let a sparkle of watercolour come through, uh, paper come through there as well. And then a really beautiful, rich red brown. What's going on this side here? Should we get there then. That's a lovely colour, isn't it? But I'm going to adjust that by putting some red into it. So I'll take some of my bright red from here. And come into that with that bright red and let that brown just link in a little bit of the other right down and through here let that sparkle there and then we'll take a bit of the deeper blue just drop that in there Finally, back to my yellow ochre green again. Down here. So we see how it's coming together lovely and loosely, and very, very much uh, pleasure in it as well. And we can leave that for a moment, let it all dry off. Yes, a smaller flat there. There we are, that's what I was looking for. Nice little stiff flat. And you'll see why, because I'm going to come back into here now, just to start to put in these shutters across here. This little flat. And this will probably need the right tools for the job. Again here. I have to do an even smaller one, which I'll have to do. So, uh, a flat, let's just see if that does it. Yeah, that'll do well. I'm using it across. What I want to do is leave a little line in between these two to imitate the, um, the shutter centre. Yeah, because I'm using 
I'm using a rake and I've got to make it flatter so you can use a rake to make things that without giving the rake effect if you're with me by using it a little bit heavier and with plenty of paint on it there we are let's that go down there we'll just come down these bits a little bit more carefully just indication there I don't want to get too detailed on this but it's just as I say it's just salient points okay I keep putting it off but I'm going to have to go for it I've got to get braid now and pick up my big oval mop and let's go for this shall we so I'm going to take some clean water drop it in here or fairly clean water and I'm going to add a bit more colour than uh, the actual photograph has right down through to here into here and I'm going to be dropping wet into wet now look I'm going to bring the water straight across there it doesn't lift it off and this was the beauty of this style that I was telling you about come around this shape here just leave that a uh, little bit there so all of that is now wet and ready to go and I want to drop into that so first of all I'm going to take some very pale yellow just drop that in here beautifully down let that glow down through letting the vertical do the work much much stronger just up here really quite strong through between these and I'm going to go a little bit darker with the yellow there deliberately
and I think we're about there. A few lights just to take down here and there because they're too bright against the other, but take my flat brush again and just soften some of these lights at the edges where they need to be a little bit softer, just a bit too bright in places. Like the sparkle, but we don't want to have them spoiling the, the light in the centre of the picture, which is where it's meant to be after all. There you go, lovely light, l lovely loose watercolour, and uh, it just gives you an idea of different ways of using the paint. So I finished this series for you, and I hope you enjoyed them. And uh, with a bit of luck, you too can now go have a go at doing some of these techniques and enjoy them as well. So we'll take a closer look, shall we? See where I've left white paper here and there because I wanted to keep the sparkle. That's why we use a rough paper and this is the difference in the rough and the smooth from that very smooth one that you saw earlier. Right down to these people in the background and all they are is just an impression. The wet into wet use for reflections. And the salient points painted first of all like these. So that we can then work around and even over them. I've just added a few more little bits down on this right hand corner but I'll call that finished now.